everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Welcome, fabricators. This month, as part of the announcements that we got for the Microsoft Fabric Update blog, there was an announcement about an SDK to be able to call Microsoft Fabric data agents externally using Python. Well, I'm excited about that. I don't know about you. One of the things we've been looking at on the channel for the past month is how do we extend data agents to be able to use them outside of Microsoft Fabric? We've looked at extending them using AI Foundry. We've looked at them extending them using Copilot Studio. Well, today we're looking at how we extend them through the Python SDK. So what does it mean to be able to do this? Well, essentially what it means is we're gonna be able to use the publish endpoint from the Microsoft Fabric data agent to be able to connect directly to an application. We're going to step through a tutorial. Step by step, I'm going to explain the things that worked for me and the things that didn't work for me. And you know what we wanna do. Let's stop talking about it. Let's go look at this together. All right, we're gonna start out by looking at the documentation. This is the Consumer Fabric Data Agent with the Python Client SDK documentation. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of prerequisites to look through. Now, there's some key things I wanna make sure that we actually call out as we're going through here. We're going to go from here to a GitHub page, and then we're going to step-by-step step go through the tutorial, but this is where it's going to kick off from a documentation point of view. Now, when we look at this, we need to make sure that we've got everything enabled for Copilot to be able to work. The cross-geo processing for AI and the cross-geo storing for AI, you might not need those. It's really going to depend on the availability for the open AI information within your geographic region. So next up, we're going to look at setting up our environment in VS Code. It's going to tell you to create a virtual environment. I'm going to tell you right now that did not work for me. But the reason it didn't work for me is because I have the Windows Linux distro underneath my Windows OS. And so when I created a virtual environment, one of the first things I noticed was that my virtual environment was underneath bin, as it would be on a Linux system or a Mac, instead of scripts. And it also had an issue being able to connect and being able to put the requirements in place. Because there was a requirement that we have when we run the TXT requirements that needed open SSL as well as Rust in order to be able to get the Azure Identity Python package to install properly. So when we run through this, if you're having those issues, if you have a configuration like me, know that you're going to have to use the regular root. Now, we're going to use an environmental variable and we're going to need our tenant ID and our data agent ID. The tenant ID you can get from the Azure portal, uh, the data agent URL we will get from the Fabric portal, but those are going to be two key things that we need in order for this code to work once we pull down the code from the GitHub repository that we're looking at. I also like this better than in setting up an environmental variable or doing direct configuration. Direct configuration is just using a variable in your script. So we're going to go to the Fabric Data Agent External Client Repository. Go ahead and click on that. It takes us over to the GitHub. And we're going to do a clone of this in VS Code. But if we just walk through this a little bit, you'll see the installation steps. And this is what we're going to walk through. We're going to do a clone. We're going to go into the folder. Uh, we're going to do our pip install requirements and we're going to set up our environmental variable. Okay. So keep in mind that if you follow this along, the links are in the description of the video. You should be able to get them so you can follow exactly what we're doing. Now let's go over to Microsoft Fabric. I'm going to go into the Fabric experience. I'm going to filter by data agent and I'm going to go to the data agent we're using for this, my domestic box office. In here, I've got my movie lake house. We set this up previously and we've used this in other demos and I'm using my box office table. You can see I've got my AI instructions. My AI instructions are mainly about the semantic nature of the way the columns are and the way we're going to ask the questions. I don't have any data instructions for the data source itself. I'm also not using any example queries, but we've looked at those before. Now we're going to ask three questions because I'm going to use these questions over and over again. What movie made the most money on a day? Now, in my rag pattern, in our lake house, this is going to be Avengers Endgame. And so when it comes back, you can see Avengers Endgame earned $157,461,641 on April 26, 2019. You can see the query as well that was used. What are the top 10 movies that made the most money on a holiday and how much money did they make? You could see it pulls back the values. It also gives me the holidays. And if I take a look, I can see the underlying code and what was used to be able to satisfy these query results against our lake house. So now all this in place, this is good to go. 
if I hadn't published this, which I have, I would click publish. I'm just going to go into settings and I'm going to get my endpoint from publishing. Right here, we're going to copy this because we're going to use this in our code. This is pretty important for us to be able to have. Now, once I have this, what we can do is we can go ahead and go over to Visual Studio Code. This is what I'm going to be using. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a folder that I'm going to use for my repository. I've got one on my C drive that I'm just using TFTF demo. I'm going to open up a terminal window because we're going to be using the terminal window. And then I'm also going to close the chat agent because I'm not really going to be using that a whole lot. So that way that gives us a little bit more real estate for our screen. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a click get clone to our directory, and then I'm going to do a CD so I'm inside of there. And then I need to create my environmental variable. And we're going to put in here tenant underscore ID, and then we're going to do database underscore agent underscore URL. This is exactly what we've got in the code. These are the variables we'll be setting. We will go ahead and put our tenant ID right here, and then we're going to put the URL that we got from our Fabric workspace. Once this is done, we can save it, we can close it, we don't need to do this again. Um, now, I'm going to do a pip install requirements. Now keep in mind, if you have any issues, I had to install OpenSSL on my Windows box. I used Chocolatey to do that. And then I also had to install Rust to make sure that I could access that. Once I did that, everything installed just fine. And I just needed to use my local directory. Now we're using the Fabric Data Agent Python script. And the first thing that happens is there's a class within here, Fabric Data Agent. We're going to do the initial initialization, um, which also has us use the tenant ID, the data agent URL, and then the authentication. The authentication is very important. This is going to pull up a window for us to prompt to, to be able to get our bearer token to pass through. Now, one of the next things that happens is the open AI command. And this is going to allow us to connect to the data agent. Now, there's a majority of this code down to line 240 all the way down to line 900 and let's see, 48 when we get to main. That is logging. That is extra stuff, but that can get confusing why that's in there. We're going to go through what the logging looks like, but we're also going to go through what the code looks like. Now, in the main, this is going to trigger by default, and you can see we're getting our variables for our tenant ID and our data agent URL, and then we've got some conditional logic to make sure that we've actually got the values in place and printing out specific messages in this command line application. We're going to call the class for the fabric data agent that's going to go through all the initializations, and then we've got hard-coded in here some questions. Now, I'm going to replace these with the questions that we want to do. What is the What movie made the most money on a day? What are the top? 10 movies that made the most money on a holiday and what movies spent the most consecutive days at number one. With this done, we're just about there. I can go ahead and I can save this. Now, I didn't save this the first time and I caught this as I was going through it. You can see there's a little dot at the top um, and I saw that and I noticed it because it will open up a browser and authentication window. This is what it's going to look like and ask a question. But you can see the first question it asks is what data is available in the lake house? So I Clicked up there and I saved it. And we're just going to run this again. So that way we get the questions that we want. So what is the what movie made the most money on a day? You can see Avengers Endgame with a total of 157,000 million or uh, 157 million dollars. What money is in the holidays? Boom, a little fabric magic right there. Our questions are coming back. The answers are consistent. That's exactly what we would want. And then what was the movie that spent the most consecutive days ranked at number one? Avatar, at least in my data set. Remember, that's not reality. That's our rag pattern. Now, let's look at the code a little bit more because... I want to look at this extra logging. And to be able to do that, we're going to call this method. Instead of doing a client.ask question, we're going to get run details and we're going to pass through the question. I'm going to go ahead and save that and we will rerun this exact code so you can see the extra logging. The extra logging is actually really, really nice. And it's something that is in this code project. You may want to have it for debugging within your own project. So if we go ahead and run this, we're going to use the same questions that are embedded inside of here. But when we get the results, you're going to see very, very quickly that this changes. So we're getting the detailed run info. What movie made the most money on a day? We're queued. We're queued. We're going to go to end processing. And then it's going to go really, really quick. We won't even see the results, but you're going to see a massive amount of information come back. We're going to scroll up and look at this in a second. But we're going to get this for every single question that we put into place, which is great because this is going to allow us to be able to dive deep inside 
and see exactly what's going on. What is the connectivity? What is the information we're getting back? How is the agent performing? And then we ask our second question. We're now we're on our third one. What movie spent the most consecutive days ranked number one or in progress in progress? And we're, we're going to get these results back. Now, if we scroll up a little bit more, you can see as you scroll up that we're getting the SQL query that was executed. There's a lot of information here that we could extract. So for our first question, you can see that. And then here's all this JSON data that we've pulled out. Let's go ahead and grab that and let's take a little closer look at this. So I'm going to grab all of this and we're just going to copy and then I'm going to create a new uh, file and we're going to call it output.json. I'm going to paste our information there and then I'm just going to real quick right click and then I'm going to format the document so we get it in a nice JSON format. And I could start parsing through here and I could take a look at the information. You can see we've got the resource, the artifact ID, the query, the information, what it was looking to do. We've got some Unix timestamps. Um, all kinds of great information for debugging if you want to dive into this deeper. Let's go ahead and comment that out and we'll put our line back in for client ask. But really what I want to do now is I want to extend this. Now this is not in the tutorial and this is extra stuff because I would ideally like this to be a question and answer type of thing instead of me having to have a hard coded list of questions. Now the code for this is really, really simple. You can see it's just a simple while statement, but essentially it's the exact same code that we've got. The only thing we're changing is in our main function. And so most of it is the same until we get to the while statement. You can see I don't have any hard-coded values in here. And specifically what we're going to do is say, what would you like to ask the data agent? Because I really want this to be an interactive process where we can interact over and over again. Now, I did realize when I created the Fabric Q&A, it was outside of my directory and I wasn't able to call it. So I'm just going to move that file real quick. Uh, so make sure it's in your directory. And then we're going to go ahead and execute this. And you can see it's a very similar thing. The browser window, I, I clicked off screen, but there we go. Now I get to ask my question, what movie made the most money in a day? And we're asking what movie made the most money in a day. It's going to submit this the same way that it did previously. And remember, I've still got the same functions in here. If we wanted to extend this to get extra run details, we could do that as well. So here we go. It's completed. Boom, a little bit of fabric magic. Avengers Endgame, earning $157 million. Consistent, and we like that. So what are the top 10 movies that made the most money on a holiday? How much did they make? And again, this is very interactive at this point in time. We could start asking additional questions and we could do a variance here, but we're also not limited to the hard-coded questions. That's what I wanted. I wanted a little more interactivity and boom, a little bit more fabric magic. Look at that. All the data, all our holidays, Okay, finally, what movie spent the most consecutive days ranked at number one? Just so you know, it's E.T. E.T. spent the most consecutive days number one of any movie ever. But in my rag pattern, and this is a great way to test it that I'm not pulling from the internet, it's Avatar because I don't have E.T. in my movie database. Okay, what did you think? This is pretty amazing. That's what I think. I love the capability that we have now, not just to extend this to Copilot Studio or to AI Foundry, but to extend it in actual code and be able to use it. So you know what we want to do. We want to hear from you. Let's keep the conversation going. Sound off. Are you excited about this? What are you looking for? What would you like to see? We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. As always, be good to one another. It's gonna be Bye. a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.